Welcome into the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and we're going to begin today's show with some Cowboys news. And there is some troubling notes on that front as it relates to, well, good news on the combine, bad news, though, as things relate to Blake Jarwin. Here's the Cowboys news today, broken by Michael Gelkin in late February. Cowboys tight end Blake Jarwin underwent surgery for a hip injury that is considered very uncommon for an active NFL player. He is not expected to be available for the start of the 2022 season, clouding his Cowboys future. Minutes later, Clarence Hill had this. The Cowboys tight end decision with Dalton Schultz and the draft is even more critical because Blake Jarwin's career is in doubt after a unique hip surgery that requires six to eight months of rehab. The Cowboys are hoping he could return, or, or, or he can return but could restructure his contract or cut him and bring him back. This hip injury is a major concern. Now, no one's going to trade for Blake Jarwin and say cut, but if they cut him, I believe they saved $3.9 million. I don't know of any injury guarantees that are left on Blake Jarwin's contract. That could end up being erroneous, but as of this point, I am unaware of any of those injury guarantees, which would save just under $4 million if they were to cut him. And given all the injury problems Jarwin's had, kind of seems like it makes some sense. He's not that expensive. You save all but like, I think it's like a million and a half of his cap hit this year. The way the deal was structured wasn't too terrible, but he is now a prime cut candidate for Dallas. When he's been out there, he's flashed. He's made plays, but he hasn't been consistently out there. He, he was buried by other tight ends this year. He was hurt. We'll always have that three-touchdown Giants game, but current Blake Jarwin can't get on the field. In light of this apparently career-threatening hip injury, assuming you can cut him and save the money, I dump him. You could always bring him back on a vet min deal if you want to. Nobody signing an injured tight end with barely 100 yards over the past two years. That guy's got no value whatsoever. And now tight end with potentially Jarwin done, this becomes one of your biggest needs because Dalton Schultz is a free agent. More on him. We'll get to him momentarily. That leaves Sean McEwen and Ian Bunting under contract at the position. Tight end has now become one of this team's premier needs with Schultz set to hit free agency. So what is your panic level then over Blake Jarwin? I think it should be pretty high because this sounds incredibly troublesome and sounds very bad from that perspective. So what is your panic level right now over Blake Jarwin? Let me know in the comments. Scale it for me 1 to 10. Let's go now to Dalton Schultz, his side of things. I do think this Jarwin injury surgery, whatever you want to term it, increases the chances he is back with the Cowboys. The franchise tag buzz has only grown in recent days, and now it makes more sense than ever. Now, the issue that I run into here is I don't want to franchise tag Dalton Schultz. If you're going to keep him, I want to pay him. $11 million thereabouts is the franchise tag hit. Unlike, unlike full extensions, you cannot bring that cap hit down. You can't finesse, mas massage the number by adding years to the deal. It's just $11 million. That's a lot to pay for one year of a tight end. A long-term deal would be similar per year. The cap hit could be more like 4 5 or $6 million. Schultz, if he hits the open market, you guys might not like it. It's the truth. He's going to command massive interest. 800 yards on almost 80 catches and 8 scores. And despite having issues blocking in space, he's not a bad blocking tight end. He's no George Kittle, mind you, but he's not a liability in line. There are moments in space he has problems relative to other tight ends like Mike Kosicki, for example, also a free agent who's going to get the bag. He's a good blocker. Now, I don't think we're going to see Schultz command George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, or even Mark Andrews money. But on the open market, I think he could command Hunter Henry or John U. Smith money. I mean, those guys' productions haven't been as good as what Schultz has done. Austin Hooper, since getting paid, has been doo-doo. And Hooper's year was not that dissimilar when he got paid to Schultz's year. He's going to get more than Logan Thomas. So if you can get Schultz like at $8 million, that is a steal in terms of the contract value, especially as Darren Waller's also do for his own new extension. Schultz is going to be expensive. So would you pay him $11 million per year, or would you rally towards the draft and find somebody? 
Type P for you go ahead and pan that figure. Or type W for you would let him walk. Five names to watch out for. Um, not necessarily my top five. I haven't stacked them yet. But these are five of the top six guys for me. Trey McBride, Colorado State, big production. Jamie Rucker, do you guys want a blocker? That's your guy. Kate Otten, not doing combine stuff. Neither is Rucker, but there's some sleeper value there. The Cowboys met in Formerly with, or formerly with Isaiah Likely. Greg Dolcich is going to run really fast. Jalen Weidermeyer, hyped by one Dallas Morning News writer as a top, or as a likely early, or likely late first round pick. No, he's not. Uh, we will know in a little bit how fast he runs at the combine. I got concerns on that front. But day two, early day three, there are tight ends available, just like how you found Dalton Schultz originally. Now, if you want to bet on the combine, our friends over at BetUS have put together some prop bets. Get going right now before the prop bets are no longer, you know, eligible to use. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code COWBOYS125 for 125% deposit bonus. Here are my four bets I've placed. Uh, there are Drake London, Malik Willis bets, but those guys aren't going to run. I'm going to go under Aiden Hutchinson, 35 and a half bench reps. I don't even know if he's going to do it. Uh, we'll find out soon. A lot of players are going to skip the bench. That's why I went under 40 and a half. They're going to skip it. They got to run faster. It's on the same day this year. So good over under on 40 and a half. That, that's the gamble bet for me. Hutchinson, he's going to go in the 30s. I think it's going to be 33, not 35. The best broad, there will be players who jump 11 feet. I don't know if it's going to be 11.5, but can't live life as going all unders. 43.5 is the best vertical. Both those jumps are really good over-unders, but I'm going to go with the over on, on them for both in the end. Speaking of the combine, some meetings here. Now, emphasis on the formal ones. The team's limited to about 40 of those. Jalen Weidermeyer, informal meeting, not likely to get some information, maybe schedule a, a Dallas day for some of these guys, or more likely a 30 visit. Isaiah Likely was a formal interview. Unclear on the informal formal. This is rounded up from Calvin Watkins, Bobby Belt, Mike Fisher, etc. Grant Calcaterra, Kate Otten, I would assume those are informal interviews then. Bailey Zappi. I'm going to go informal here as well. This would most likely be as a, hey, if he's there in round four, round five, Let's talk about it. Derek King, the Miami Hurricanes QB. I think he's going to be a receiver in the NFL. He can't throw well enough. He was informal. Traylon Burks, the Arkansas receiver, was a formal interview. That's a fun one right there. He's That is an Amari replacement. He's going to run so fast for his size. Isaiah Spiller, Abram Smith, I think are both informal is my guess. Three informal offensive line meetings. Luke Fortner out of Kentucky. Jaitir Carter out of Southern. Chasen Hines, the other LSU guard, was an informal. Chris Paul, no, not that one. Tulsa. Bernard Raymond, the Central Michigan tackle, a former interview along with Cade Mays, who offers a bunch of flexibility along the offensive line in terms of the combine meeting so far. We don't even know half of them yet. Sunday's video, I think I plan to break down the full combine meeting list, the list that we know. I'm not there this year. I was there last year, so we'll have to, you know, wait and see what the full list looks like. I will make note, Kenyon Green, not a meeting at all in any capacity with the Cowboys, which might mean something, might not. It's the combine. I think there's a lot of players in the end. If you want that Sunday video I teased, subscribe. YouTube.com slash Cowboys TV. We've got daily videos and live shows every single week. So if you want to join us for free here on the Cowboys Report, you have come to the right spot. Hit that big red button and subscribe right now for all the Cowboys info you could ever want.